It's getting to be that time of the year again. It's starting to get cold and much of the country is starting to add layers. Let's talk about wintertime concealed carry. So most of the year, much of the year, this is probably how we're going to dress. I've got a polo on, maybe you have a t-shirt, uh, I've got jeans, maybe you have khakis, whatever. You're going to be basically uh, dressed casually like this most of the year. But in the winter time, as we start to add layers, it's going to uh, change that draw stroke a little bit. It's going to change that presentation of the firearm because we have to defeat those uh, additional layers to gain access to the firearm. Uh, but when we just have a, a, a shirt like this, basically the draw stroke is going to look something like this. I clear the garment, access that firearm, extend, press, deal with the threat. I'm going to look at my environment, make sure there's no other bad guys that I'm going to need to deal with, okay? Um, look at, look at uh, the environment around me. I'm going to clear my garment. I'm going to look at my holster. I like to maintain visual contact with my holster and make sure there's no garments or anything in the way. And we're definitely going to talk about that. Reinsert that firearm into the holster. Okay. So again, uh, in the winter time, we've got more layers. That's going to change when we just have a t-shirt. It looks like this. Now let's take a look when you start to add some layers. Okay, so nothing really has changed other than I've added this uh, lighter jacket. This jacket is great in the spring, great in the fall. Um, it's something that I might not wear in the wintertime unless I were to have another layer underneath, but in this case, uh, we're doing it for the demonstration of how uh, the draw stroke changes with uh, a jacket like this. Um, it's not going to change by much, but it is going to change just a little bit because we're going to need to be more forceful when we lift up that, um, that jacket. This jacket happens to have an elastic at the bottom. It has these drawstrings. We're going to talk about that because that's important. So basically, the presentation, again, it doesn't change much, but when we access that firearm, we need to be more forceful. Okay? We've got a little bit more resistance, something that we're going to need to, to practice. Okay, so again, now here's where the drawstrings become very important. As we reholster that firearm, these drawstrings have a tendency to get in the way of the holster. Okay, so right now I purposely reholstered the firearm with the drawstring in the way. That is very dangerous because if that drawstring gets in the way of the trigger, you can have a negligent discharge. You're going to clear the garment out of the way, maintain visual access, reinsert the firearm into the holster. So again, forcefully clear. Make sure there's no other bad guy scan and assess. Maintain visual contact, reinsert that firearm. Some people may want to switch their holster from an inside the waistband to an outside the waistband. My mantra is same gun, same location, same mode of readiness, always. Um, I always want to have uh, that muscle memory, I always want to have that consistency. Um, changing the holsters isn't really the end of the world because basically the farm is in the same spot. It's just on the outside of the belt instead of on the inside of the belt. So let's take a look at how that might look with an outside the waistband holster. So here we are with the same jacket, same gun. The only thing that we changed is the holster. And I purposely left the bottom of the holster sticking out. This is a Safariland GLS. Um, and again, I left the bottom of the holster sticking out to kind of prove a point. Um, as you're going about your daily life, obviously if you're concealed carry, you really probably don't want anyone to know that you're carrying. That's a topic for uh, a different discussion, open carry versus concealed carry, uh, not today's topic. but. We've got the bottom of that holster exposed and we don't want that. So we're going to pull that shirt, uh, pull that jacket down over the holster. Now you can still sort of see the outline of something here. And if I reach up, you can definitely see that the holster has been exposed. So that is definitely something that you want uh, to consider when you're choosing your, your clothing and you're choosing your jackets. The draw stroke's not really going to change. So I'm going to access that firearm, extend and press, okay? Scan, maintain visual contact with that holster, clear all garments, reinsert the firearm into the holster. Okay, so with the outside the waistband, it doesn't change much, but it is definitely more noticeable, less concealable. 
um, something that you definitely want to, uh, to keep in mind when you're choo choosing your clothing. So here we are, we've got uh, the same gun, the same outside the waistband holster, and we have a heavier jacket on. Okay, again, still if we reach, we can uh, show that holster, not something we want to do, something that you need to be aware of. Um, but obviously this is just a little bit longer. This is also a little bit heavier. This is going to change that draw stroke a little bit. Um, we are not going to be able to pull that jacket up. You can see that it's actually getting hung up on my, my uh, handle of my gun. Now, again, I have a Safariland GLS, and the GLS has an active retention. I have a button right here that I need to depress, or I can't pull that firearm from the holster. And I really like that for outside the waistband holsters to have active retention. Maybe yours doesn't. If you go to pull that firearm up and you're pulling on it, well, you're going to actually pull the firearm right out of the holster. Okay? So if you're going to wear a jacket like this, you're going to need to clear that garment with two hands not just one because we've got to clear the jacket we don't want it to get hung up on uh, the grip of the firearm so we got to use two hands nothing else changes once you've cleared the garment but we need to build that muscle memory and we need to build that consistency okay uh, another option quite simply is and this is what I would do when I this is what I do when I wear this jacket is I leave it open all right. Obviously, the front uh, doesn't have that thermal protection. Reason why we wear jackets, uh, but you know everything with concealed carry is a trade-off, and this is one of those trade-offs. So what I then do is I can sweep um, to the side to clear that uh, to clear the jacket out of the way. If we cover up the firearm, because that's how we would carry, we're going to sweep. Now, this is very important. I've seen people do this. They're going to take the firearm, clear the jacket, and reinsert the gun. And that's obviously a very big no-no, very big safety violation, because what did we just do? We just pointed, obviously, this is a dummy gun. I wouldn't do this with a real firearm. This is a non-operational replica. Um, they're going to point that gun at themselves and never point the firearm at anything you're not willing to destroy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my support hand, clear the jacket, pin it under my arm, clear my shirt, look at the holster, reinsert the firearm, cover back up. So it's just like that. Sweep the firearm. Very simple. Gloves. Do you wear gloves in the winter time? If so, that's something that you're going to need to uh, train and practice with. Wearing gloves is going to change the way we interface with the firearm. We're adding padding to our fingers. We're losing some of our sensation. Uh, our fingers are getting thicker. Now, these gloves are not very thick. They do a, a little bit in the winter time. Um, these are probably aren't the, the gloves I would wear uh, during the winter, but for demonstration purposes, they work nonetheless. Um, take the gloves that you would wear during the winter time and you're going to want to practice with those to make sure that uh, you still have good operation of the firearm, good safe handling, good proper grip. Also, good trigger press, okay? We want to make sure that our fingers are going to fit in the trigger guard. If our gloves are too big, uh, are our fingers going to fit in the trigger guard? All of these things are things we need to know. We need to prove our gear up front. And we don't want to find out in a life and death situation if it's going to work or not. We need to know up front. These are dry fire techniques we need to practice. With the gloves, clear the garment, access the firearm, do our extend and press, our scan, nothing changes. Look at the holster, reholster. Things that we need to practice. Uh, a few other uh, things that we need to discuss, um, size of the gun. Um, I've spoken with a lot of people who in the winter time will say that they're going to start carrying a larger gun. I'm generally against this, as I said previously, same gun, same location, same mode of readiness, always. That's my personal preference. Obviously there, there are exceptions to every rule, 
and that exception would be is if you stick within the same family of firearms. And what I mean is if your firearm, let's say for example, uh, you carry a Glock, a Glock 19 for uh, most of the year, and in the winter time you want to go with a larger firearm, so you go with a Glock 17, fine. Um, the firearms are basically the same, just a little bit bigger uh, in the grip and the slide. Your trigger press is basically going to be the same, so it's not going to be a, a surprise to you. Um, your controls are all going to be in the same spot, and that is really very important, is that you're sticking with that same uh, size. Uh, I'm sorry, that same family of firearm. Personally, I carry a 6-hour P320 Compact. I carry that same gun all year long. I don't flip-flop firearms. Where this really, really becomes a problem, however, is if you are going with, let's say, let's say you carry um, a shield, an m and shield, which is a, a subcompact gun, uh, and, and now you're going up to, uh, in the wintertime, let's say, because you can conceal a larger gun, you're going to go with a 1911, which is, you know, completely different family of firearms. Uh, the operation is different, your trigger press is different, you've got manual safeties that you might not have on your uh, everyday carrier shield. So I did generally just stay away from uh, flip-flopping firearms, stay away from treating firearms like they're fashion accessories. Um, same gun, same location, and you really can't go wrong. Those are the things that we need to really consider in the winter time. The last thing that I'll may mention is that uh, some people may want to change to a shoulder draw or something like that or to a pocket. Um, and again, you know, I like muscle memory. I like consistency. I'm going to stay away from changing my technique whenever possible. Uh, I'm going to want to dress around the firearm. Um, that's my personal preference is to dress around the firearm. This is a lifestyle choice. Uh, so I'm going to have that firearm uh, muscle memory and consistency burnt into uh, my neural pathways so that uh, in a life and death situation there are fewer things that I need to think about. I'm Thomas with Alpha Concepts. As always, be armed, be trained, and be alpha.